Hello and welcome, I'm Ursa Ryan and this is going to be my comprehensive guide to a cultural victory on Civ 6. I hope you guys are okay. Looking forward to diving in to getting a tourism victory. It's, you know what, it, it's easy enough if you know how to do it, but tourism is a funny thing in Civ 6 and they've mm, quite considerably changed how it works from Civ 5. Gathering Storm has made it a little bit more complicated as well as Rise and Fall before that, but as long as you keep certain things in mind, it's very possible to do. And before you start getting really too keen about what I'm doing, I'm doing it on online speed because at the moment most people play Civ 6 on online speed. I know there are still some people out there who love standard speed and maybe you even like epic or marathon speeds, don't get me wrong, I love those too but online is going to be the way we're going to do this. And I've also got it on Emperor difficulty, enough to make you see that the game is fairly difficult, but not so hard that I'm having to change how I play to beat Deity difficulty. That will be a totally separate guide another time. To keep a little consistency, I'm playing as Rome again, who, if you don't know what Rome do, they're all about linking cities with roads, they're all about Roman legions, and they're all about bath districts. I got them randomly when I was doing my science playthrough, and actually, Rome are fantastic because they don't have anything that changes uh, the way they put districts down because they're all there's no yield bonuses, there's no special districts in that way. They don't have any skills that really change the base game, particularly. They are a very standard middle of the road choice. I mean, obviously they're not standard in the sense that, you know, baths and roads are very good things, and especially the extra monument you get in every city. There's a lot of good stuff about Rome, but there's nothing game-breaking here. That's what I'm trying to say. You could choose any of the middle tier, and when I say middle tier, I don't mean ability. I mean your Americas, your... Uh, well, I mean, it, it, there's so many out there. Pretty much any Civ that doesn't muck around with adjacency bonuses. Uh, when, when I say that, I mean people like Japan or Greece or uh, who else are we thinking? Uh, anybody like that, really? Germany with their hands districts? I think it's probably going to be that sort of thing that makes you change where you put the districts down. Yes, Rome has a fantastic bath district that makes you put aqueducts down all the time. That in itself doesn't change the way you put things down. It just encourages you to actually put aqueducts down, which is something everybody should do, but nobody ever does. And my start is as vast. It is basically the most generically eh, start you're gonna get. I loaded up the game, I just randomly put it on the first game, I haven't reset it. I wanna prove to you that you can start on pretty much any start and still get a culture victory. Unlike with science victories, uh, culture is a bit more of a, you know, like a fallback in the sense that you don't need a particular start of any kind to work with a culture victory. With science uh, and faith, Obviously, mountains and uh, jungles or forests are going to be very important to you. The culture? Not really. You can kind of get away with anything. It, it's all about making the best use of your land as you can. And you can see my start here. Uh, we're always looking for four yield tiles. Those are the ones that you want to be doing as soon as you can. Things like rivers are important. Things like coasts. Obviously getting a good mountain at the start is fantastic because it will help your science game, it will help you get your religion game going nice and quickly. But really, we're talking about those four yield tiles. And actually, you can see here, I've immediately got a stone on a hill. It's, for me, like a bit of a meh one because it's not that exciting, but at least it's got two food. I like a four-year tile that has at least two food, so that's, that's fine. You can see over here, we've got spices, which is a five-yield tile. That is the big tile. That's good. Apart from that, they, those are our only ones. The crabs here, three gold is never the best for yield tile, but that's okay. We'll improve that and get a little bit more food out of that later in the game, but the start is fairly average. Am I happy with my starting location? I'm thinking about uh, housing is the big thing for yield tiles. Yes, that's actually good. If I were to move to the other side of the river, it would cost me a turn, and I'd get rid of that four yield tile. There's no need to do that. That's a bit pointless. Uh, if I were to move down and round to sort of here, I'd be, oh, I'd be kind of losing the adjacency to this tiny river over here. I could, in theory, put the city on this tile. That would still give me adjacency uh, to the four, food, you know, to the four yield tile over there. But actually, I like being on the sea. Means that I'm going to be able to explore quite readily with my, and I'm on a continents map. I'm just, I kept it on continents, but we're playing based standard games, so I'm expecting there to be city states and other places out there. But this is good. 
This has got a lot of production near me. I've got a lot of hills that can be utilized later in the game. I've got a little bit of tundra up here. It's not the best, but that's fine. Yeah, generally speaking, this is a decent enough start. That's fine. Now, whilst the science playthrough had a little bit of a shock in terms of what is the most important district, though a cultural victory, there's no prizes. The most important is a theatre square. There's a couple of reasons why this is the most important district for a cultural victory. Your points are important. The writer, artist, and musician points are going to be the foundation of how you get through the game. Additionally, uh, it's not going to sort of show it, but you can put on theatre square productions or city projects that boost the theatre square. That is one of the most important things that you can do with this district. But the most important thing is obviously your amphitheatres, your broadcast centres and your art museums. Those are the really, really important buildings because those give you great work slots. Now, we can't see it at the moment, we haven't unlocked any of them, but those slots are going to be important for you to win the game. If you don't have enough slots for great works, we're talking books, uh, paintings, sculptures, artefacts, mu musician, what are they called? Scripts. The music, I can't even remember the word for it. Oh god. Just shows you how cultural I am in real life, doesn't it? Unless you have enough slots for that sort of stuff, you're going to fall down really, really quickly. How many theatre squares do you need? An absolute minimum you need about eight and I'm, I'm serious with that with a culture victory unlike science where the you know the, the, the actual efficiency of each city is the most important thing for a culture game the wider you go the more luck you're gonna have because it's all about generating points and it's all about getting enough great slots now Having an important, uh, having a very powerful capital is a big thing. There's a couple of wonders in the game that'll really help you out later down the line. But it's all about the number of cities. Eight as an absolute minimum. I'm realistically looking to have about 12 cities. Once you get beyond about 12, you're not really going to get much in the way of efficiency out of that. And how does that work? If I'm going to be looking to get 12 cities, Magnus is my choice. Again, a lot of people go straight for Pingala, and Pingala is great. Don't get me wrong, he is a fantastic uh, civ, uh, a governor, I should say, with, with the extra increase in culture and science, your extra culture, your extra science, and your extra great people points, as well as your extra tourism. We will be sticking Pingala in our capital at some point. But Magnus is where we're going to start. We're going to go straight for the Groundbreaker and we're going to go straight for Provision. Settlers trained in the city do not consume a population because we want to get our uh, citizens out onto the world as soon as possible and we need to jump and, and basically grab as much of the map as we can as soon as we can. That is the most important thing for us to do, especially because we can't actually get theatre squares out very quickly. Unlike with campuses, which are pretty much the first tech you can learn, drama and poetry is all the way in the classical era. That means we've got to get through all this gump before. Now, you can beeline it to a certain extent. If I go on drama and poetry, you see you don't actually need craftsmanship or state workforce. Whether you do that before you go for political philosophy is, is a good question. I, it's difficult to know whether that's the best thing to do because craftsmanship gets you Ilkum and Agugi, which are the two best early game civics, uh, because you've got the production towards builders, you've got uh, production towards your melee and anti-cavalry and, and ranged units, those are all very important, but early empire is also very good. Uh, extra production towards settlers, government plaza is very important because you need that down to get your settling boosts later in the game, we'll talk about that in a little bit. And political philosophy is always going to be good as long as classical republic is down and of course the apanda uh, apadana ap ap i can never pronounce this damn thing <laughs> apadana is a very important wonder as well because this has two great work slots which is a really good thing for us because writing slots are always difficult to get at the beginning of the game there's lots of different ways you can take this i'm going to simply click on code of laws for now we're going to get a nice uh, bonus to our, uh, our culture per turn if I just settle down Rome appears get a boost for sailing because I'm on the coast and you can see already I'm up at 3.4 because Rome starts with a monument normally I would rush towards getting a monument at the beginning of the game because they are underrated people say oh look plus one culture that's not very good no if it's got full loyalty which every city should have it also provides plus one culture, that's basically plus two. That's really, really good. 
you know you, that, that's that's fantastic we want to keep that as much as we can because that's going to power me, to, power me towards code of laws in three turns and after that we're only looking at six turns on this and that ah, there's no way we're going to get a builder up and running before we might discover a second continent before that point i think we're going to jump towards early empire to start but we'll see how the game plays out we go from the most important districts to what I now call the second most important district. Now, the most important district, Theatre Squares, I want to see in every single city as uh, an essential point. The second most important for me, apart from aqueducts, because Rome has fantastic aqueducts and that's all great, the second most important for me is I need fantastic ways of producing the buildings in Theatre Squares. So much of the time, the problem with theatre square, uh, well, with tourism victories, is that you don't have the means to then be building the buildings later in the game. Art museums and broadcast centres later in the game, these buildings are bloody expensive. Like, really, really expensive. 290 production. It's a third of the wonder. Like, it, it, it's really, really big. Uh, and then, of course, you've got down the science track later on, where's radio? Here's radio. Broadcast Center's 440 production. It's, it's a lot of production, that. A huge amount of production. So I need a way to be able to get, you know, essentially everything going. And the second most important is my decision as to which way I take that. The first of three options is the most obvious. It's production. Obviously, if a city can build lots of stuff, then that's great. And industrial zones will get you through that job. Now, Rome synchronizes well with industrial zones because of the way, you know, getting baths down and aqueducts. And as of the updates to Gathering Storm, a good old aqueduct will get you to production adjacency on your industrial zone. It's a very good combination that and you can get some huge production later in the game. There are some advantages to going down this route, namely the ability to produce wonders. Wonders can be really good in a cultural game. We're going to go through some a little bit later, but the only problem with production is that it's very city orientated. If you have a capital with a hundred production a turn and you settle a new city, that new city is useless. Right? You can't build a theatre square in less than 30, 40 turns in that new city where your capital is kicking out wonders in like eight turns. That's great. That's fantastic. But you need the production and you need the ability across your empire. So industrial zones are a good way to go, but I wouldn't necessarily say it's the most obvious choice for your second most important district. Harbours and commercial hubs are the, the second choice, effectively. Now, you don't have to go down one or the other. It can be both. Uh, these days, the way they've changed city-states in the game is that it, basically if you get a commercial or a merchantile city-state, then it provides a gold bonus to both. But producing gold is a really, really important thing. Um, obviously, gold is a, 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 an empire-wide pool. If you settle a new city and you build the commercial hub, you can just instantly purchase in the amphitheater, purchase in the art museum. Like It's a really good combination. That You can even purchase archaeologists later in the game. I like gold. Gold is a very good way of doing it. And also the extra trade routes you get through lighthouses and markets is a really important bonus as well because it helps you boost those cities as you found them. And again, founding cities is a really big deal for us. As a particular preference for me, I would always build harbours as a preference over commercial districts as long as the adjacency is good. And the reason for that is some of the buildings later down, especially the lighthouse and the shipyard, provide huge amounts of food and production later in the game. Even the seaport can provide a lot of uh, food later in the game. They all, they just, they're very good. They build up your city. Yes, the gold output isn't as great, but it still gets you gold. You still have a trade route and the extra food and production really means your city is going to be fantastic. I would always prefer a harbor over a commercial hub, but if you can't get a good harbor, a commercial hub is a fantastic alternative because it is straight, raw, filthy gold that you know is, is fantastic. There's also some great merchants that are really, really well synchronized. So you want a couple of commercial hubs at least, but again, it really it's, it's the ability just to get some raw gold that you can funnel into other cities. They're, they're really good districts. Last but not least, you have holy sites and the very particular way of playing that is Jesuit education. I love a Jesuit education game using faith 
to build or to, to rush build any campus or theatre square, building is highly overpowered and highly fantastic. The benefits of getting a holy site means you get a religion, which means you can have crusade if you're looking to expand a little bit, defender of the faith. If you've got the land you need and you need to protect it, it can help you get lots of different amenities and, and little bits and pieces. It also stops other sieves from getting a religious victory, which in the later stages of the game is quite possible. I've, really, religious victories the computer doesn't really tend to go for too hard. But I like I like holy sites. It, Jesuit education is a very good way of playing, it. and the advantage again with faith is it's an empire-wide pool as opposed to a city by city thing. So as long as my religion is in a city, I can rush by buildings in a very good way. Uh, it also syncs with some of the later governments, which which help massively.